Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden and welcome to my June front garden tour. So you all probably saw by the title of this video, the garden is looking a little wild these days. And I say that in the best way possible because it is obvious that all these plants are loving their lives, they're happy as can be, and they are just growing and blooming their little hearts out. But it is that time of year when it's it's about time for me to start cutting some things back. It's about time for me to cut some of my perennials back, take out some of my spring annuals, kind of just, you know, that cycle of the garden. It's just at that point where I can tell I need to get out here and I need to get my pruners and kind of clean some stuff up. But I just love it, this overgrown secret garden look. I love it when the garden looks like this. So I really wanted to get the camera out and I wanted to film this for you all and for myself so that I can remember what the garden is looking like. It's, um, it's about mid June right now. So let me turn the camera around and I'll show you all what has been going on. It's really beautiful. So let me bring you all over to what I consider the front of my garden, which is actually on the corner over here because I live on a corner lot. I consider this the front because of this annual swoop I have here. I just have to set the scene for you all because it, it just, I, I just have to explain what a beautiful day it is today. So it is actually Sunday, Father's Day. So happy Father's day to all you fathers out there. Thank you for all you do. Um, but it is warm. I can hear lawnmowers in the background and there's the scent of barbecue. I feel like all of my neighbors are barbecuing today, which is, which is just wonderful. So I hope that's kind of setting this scene. It is absolutely summer here in, in Northern California where I live. So the very first thing I want to point out is my front annual swoop right here. And this is a garden bed that I reserve for annuals each year. And it's actually really fun because I can, I change the colors of my annuals each year. And you can see what my color scheme is this year, yellow. And it is sunny and it is happy and it is joyful. And every time I drive down the street and I see this yellow, I love it. I think it is so, it's just so fun. I just love it. So the star of the show, I would say, if you can tell, it is Supertunia Mini Vista Yellow. That is this one right here. It is crazy <laughs> in a good way, in a good way. It is so vigorous. You can see that the blooms are quite tiny as compared to regular Supertunia blooms, but you can see how vigorous it is. I mean, it, it just goes and goes and goes. And I have to be honest, Jason and I have actually come out here and cut it back a little bit because it was almost taking over this luscious Lantana berry blend right here. This guy is going to be big. It just is going to take a little bit more time to grow up with the heat. It likes the heat. So it's just going to take a little bit more time than the Supertunia Mini Vista yellow. So I'm waiting for that to grow up. Then that'll be just a slight pop of pink just to kind of break up the yellow a little bit. Um, but I think it'll be really, really pretty. Then you can see over here. So Supertunia Mini Vista yellow is new for 2023. You can actually get this right now. This one is Supertunia Saffron Finch. You cannot get this one right now. Let me see if I can shade it my hat there you go <laughs> but you cannot get this one till 2024 unfortunately proven winners sends these plants to me to try out I live in zone 9b so I live in a very very hot area so it's kind of good for all of us to see how these plants do with all the heat that we have and so far they're loving their life. So Supertunia Saffron Finch, Luscious Lantana Berry Blend, Supertunia Mini Vista Yellow, and then I have to point this one out here. This one is just starting to come into its own. This is Luscious Lantana Pina Colada. Look at that one right there. So pretty, so pretty. So that is my front annual swoop this year. It has been changing a lot. Um, I also have, which I don't even think you can see it very much anymore, I also have lemon coral sedum in there just to kind of break it up a little bit. But honestly, I don't even think it was necessary <laughs> because the Supertunia Mini Vista Yellow and the Supertunia Saffron Finch are just kind of taking over in a very, very good way. So I love it this year. Then just off to the right, these are Shasta Daisies. 
look at how amazing they look right now. This is one of my favorite types of flowers, the ones that just look so happy and just like such a classic flower. These Shasta daisies right here, these I actually got from Lowe's, the three for $10 sale from Lowe's. They're fantastic. And I thought, I, I honestly don't know what variety they were. I thought that they were, um, gosh, I can't remember right now, like a snowdrift variety uh, because they were so short last year, but you can see this year, they're kind of starting to shoot up a little bit. So I think they're probably, um, oh gosh, I'm totally blanking, the, the taller kind. I have to show you all. I just saw a orange carpenter bee. Look right here. Can you see them? Right here. So this is a male carpenter bee. I think they're also known as teddy bear bees. Look at how big he is. He's just the cutest thing. So we have a lot of carpenter bees around here, a lot, a lot. And I know a lot of you are worried about carpenter bees because they drill holes in, um, in wood, but I think we have so many oak trees and stuff like that. They always go for, for that type of stuff, but I just love seeing them. Okay, so back to the garden. You can see it right here. This lantana I have right here is called Luscious Lantana Pink Berry Blend. I think this is probably my favorite color of the Luscious Lantanas that I have this year. Right behind it is Ladybird Sun Glow Callilophus, which I have to show you over here. It's looking gorgeous. Look at this. Look at how pretty it is. And the hotter it gets, the more bright and the more color it is. Can you guys see how many bees are over here? So this whole garden bed, probably from right here, coming down here, this is what I'm considering my drought tolerant garden bed. I've drastically cut back on the amount of emitters I have here, the drip that I have here, just to see how these plants can handle less water. They are loving their life, loving their life. Here I have Truffula Pink Gonfrena. It's another drought tolerant one from Proven Winners. And then look at this Pinkberry Blend. Look at how happy it is. I can't wait till these guys get a little bit bigger because they're just going to go crazy. I can tell with the heat. Here I have my Helen Von Stein lamb's ear that of course it's drought tolerant. It loves the heat. It's super happy. Gosh, this carpenter bee is just the cutest little thing. So this is my favorite plant in the garden. This is Mystic Spires Blue Salvia. I love this plant, it's a perennial. It blooms, it starts setting up these spiky blooms and you, you really don't have to cut it back. You can if you want, but you can see like this one down here is done blooming and you can just leave it and it looks beautiful on its own. I cut some back last year. I cut some of the bloom stalks off last year, but I just, I don't know. I obviously don't have to cut it back uh, right at this point right now because I think it's still looking really, really good. Over here, I have my uh, Summerific Hibiscus. Um, I wanna say it's the berry one. I'll put it on the screen exactly which one that one is. But probably in my last garden tour, it was probably only about this tall. And you can see how tall it's gotten. It's probably gotten about three feet, maybe four feet tall already in just a month. And so hopefully that will start blooming soon and it's just going to be incredible. The thing that is looking kind of wild these days, still beautiful, <laughs> but kind of wild, are my sweet peas. This is Mrs. R. Bolton sweet peas. They're so pretty. They're such a pretty backdrop. I know you probably can't tell, but I do have a black fence behind there that they're growing on, and I am so happy with having sweet peas there this year. I fall sowed these. I actually fall sowed them in trays, and then I planted them out, and they are just as happy as can be. And it is June, so we almost made it through half of the year having these beautiful pink sweet peas here, and I am definitely going to repeat this next year for sure. So my plan is this week is I'm actually going to take these out because they're starting to go to seed and they're starting to look a little, a little wild and <laughs> not in a good way, right? Just a little bit wild. But what I'm planning on doing is I'm planning on putting sunflowers right there. So I think I'm going to sow some sunflowers either later today, probably not today because we're going to do some stuff with Jason for Father's Day, but um, probably tomorrow I will sow some sunflowers. I haven't decided if I'm gonna direct sow them. I think I might try direct sowing them. I'll show you all. In my cut flower garden over there on the other side of my driveway, I direct sowed sunflowers and I was so worried about it because I always 
kind of fail at direct sowing sunflowers, but they, they're actually doing great. So I'm going to try it there this year. And then I'll have kind of like a wall of sunflowers and talk about yellow. Like I'm going all out with yellow this year, which is going to be so fun. Now, this is a crepe myrtle tree. I don't know the variety, but it has this beautiful fuchsia pink blooms. And so that is going to be a bright pop of pink that's going to help break up all the yellow that I have in my garden. I just, I'm so excited about it. I had done, let's see, like the first two years we lived here, 2020 and 2021, I did a whole bunch of pink. And pink is my favorite color in the garden by far, right? Um, but when we had the pink crepe myrtle, we had a uh, Supertunia mini, or Supertunia Vista bubblegum here, and then a whole bunch of pink plants back here. I remember thinking, oh, that's a, that's a lot of pink. That might be a little too much. I want to break it up a little bit. But then it's like, it's kind of fun to go all out in one color, which is what I think I've, I've leaned toward this year with yellow because I've been so excited about the yellow this year. And I think, I, I think I'm definitely getting my yellow fix this year. So I think it'll be really pretty with the sunflowers, uh, back there. I, I think it'll be really gorgeous. I wanted to point out here, this is my Laura Pedlum or Chinese fringe flower. This I just love the foliage of this flower. I know I talk about this one all the time with you all, but I just wanted you all to see, I feel like I never point it out in my summer garden tours, but it has this dark foliage that is just such a nice break in my garden. You know, it's like a whole bunch of green, whole bunch of green, and that is a nice, beautiful, dark pop of red. I have one here, one here, and then one over there. And I really think that the garden needs it. Like you don't really realize how much your garden needs that dark foliage, but it needs that dark foliage. And I'm so happy to have it right there. Right here, this is Homestead Verbena, one of the most beautiful purple colors I've ever seen. My ladybird Sunglow Calilophus. I put one in there thinking that it would be able to compete and it's not really competing and that is okay <laughs> that I am fine with that. Maybe it'll, as, as it keeps getting hotter, maybe it'll, it'll start poking through a little bit more. Um, but this, this Homestead Verbena, this is just, Whew, this is just a winner. This is another one of my absolutely favorite plants in the garden. More Helen Von Stein lambs here right here. Um, some Shasta daisies that I need to cut back. <laughs> but look at this. Look at how pretty that is. Oh, I just think it's just the prettiest thing. Shasta daisy season is just the best. It's so pretty. It's so happy. It's so cheerful. I love it. So I did want to show you I have a ton of weeds that I need to take care of, um, but I did want to show you all my purple hyacinth bean. So I planted one seed. I direct sowed one seed right there. It is hooked up to drip um, and then it is growing. I put a string up to the sign and it's all the way up to the sign already. <laughs> so this is what I did last year. It was beautiful. The neighbors loved it. This purple hyacinth bean has some purple spiky flowers that look gorgeous. It's so pretty. I will keep it away from the sign. That's what I did last year is I kind of just kept it more on the other side of the sign. I always say, if this was a stop sign, I would never do it. But it's just a road narrow sign, so I don't feel like it's that big of a deal. Um, and I will keep the sign clear. I just, I love doing it. I think it's so pretty. And I think it just brings like, it's some interest, some whimsy to the sign that I do have to have in my garden, unfortunately. All right, moving just over here, you can see my Eden Climbing Rose Arch. These roses are from heirloomroses.com. They didn't send them to me. I bought them myself. I just am so in love with them. They are such good performers. And I don't know if it's because they're Edens or it's, or is, it's because they're from Heirloom Roses and they do own root roses. So basically a lot of roses can, can be, um, grafted onto a different type of rootstock. And these roses are actually Eden Rose rootstock, which I, they, they are just performing so well. I have to show you, I'm starting to get a second flush right here. I cut I, you know, I, I deadheaded pretty much everything and I'm starting to get my second flush of the season, which is not going to be as much as the first flush I know, but just the fact that it's already starting. Oh, I have to show you guys too. I have aphids just a little bit, but I had no aphids earlier on in the season and now I'm starting. I had rust earlier on in the season for the roses. I see no rust now. 
But no, I don't see any rust now, which is great, but now I see a little bit of aphids. So if it's not one thing, it's the other. That's just kind of the nature of gardening and roses especially, and that's fine. Um, <laughs> but I'm really, the, ugh, these Eden roses, they're just fantastic. Okay, coming up here, I wanna show you guys. This is my Oklahoma red bud. Love it, beautiful. It bloomed beautifully this spring, and now the foliage on it is just so pretty. It took me a really long time to decide what type of tree I wanted to plant right here, and I'm so happy with what I chose. This tree is going to be beautiful once it gets bigger. It gets about 20 to 25 feet tall and wide, so it's not gonna be huge right here, but it's gonna have that dappled, dappled sun underneath it. It's, oh, I just, I cannot wait for it to get big but underneath that I have what I call my red bud garden bed and I'm t I, I hope I'm gonna try and find a picture of what this garden bed looked like when I first planted it it looked like there was nothing here it looked like there was absolutely nothing so this is super tunia vista snowdrift the white the white there's four of them only four and then we have Augusta Lavender Heliotrope, another one of my favorite, favorite flowers. Love Heliotrope. Look at how good this plant is doing this year. For those of you who have watched me for a while, I had Augusta Lavender Heliotrope in some pots in my backyard, along with some Suncredible Sunflowers. And the Suncredible Sunflowers completely overtook this plant. And I thought that this plant just didn't perform well for me here in Zone 9B. Well, now that I've given it a little bit of space, a little bit of room to show its true colors, holy moly, it is, it's just fantastic. It is such a fantastic plant. I'm so happy that I tried it again this year because it is just beautiful. And I love the lavender color right behind it, kind of like my height in this garden bed. This is meteor shower verbena. And I've talked about this before. This is a verbena banariensis. I have grown Verbena banariensis by seed before. It's a beautiful plant. It gets way taller than the meteor shower of Verbena, but the one from seed is not sterile or, or almost sterile, right? And it reseeds itself like crazy. I planted that 2020, right? So three years ago, three seasons ago, and I'm still getting little seedlings of Verbena banariensis. Still, I'm still getting them, which some people would be really excited about. I just don't have enough room for them to go wild. So this meteor shower Verbena, it's it's not going to reseed itself just like the, the generic Verbena, Verbena banariensis, which I really love because I do love this plant. I think it is so pretty and so whimsical and such a fantastic plant to have kind of like as a backdrop. So this right here is my uh, red, red bud garden bed. I love it. Did want to show you guys right here. Look at this one. This is luscious lantana lemon tart. You guys see that? Such a pretty one. This is actually one that I had last year. I had it in pots last year. Actually, this is one of the plants that inspired the yellow because I had this beautiful um, yellow pot with that one and then a couple other yellow plants, uh, Supertunia limoncello. It was so pretty. And so what I did is I took that plant out and I root washed it. I don't know if you all remember that video. It was, it was kind of a mess. It was a mess video. So I had read this book that was talking about root washing when you transplant plants instead of of protecting the roots and digging out as big of a root ball as you possibly can to actually use the technique of root washing. And it wasn't really for Lantana. It was more, she was more talking about um, for trees or woody shrubs, just to make sure that your roots weren't, uh, you know, circling on itself. But I wanted to try it out with the Lantana and see how it does. I also tried it out with this um, uh, rockin' Rockin' fuchsia salvia, this pink salvia right here. Those were also in pots as well. So I root washed these two and I root washed that one over there and they did struggle once I root washed them, right? Which is exactly what they said would happen with root washing. But then when they come back, they come back stronger and hardier and just like better plants. So I can't 
attest that they're better plants right now. They look like really good plants at this point because um, these are all transplanted. But I just wanted to show you all an update of my root washing plants just so that you guys can see. They did survive. They look really, really good. It did take a while for them to reacclimate, which is um, which is normal in root washing because they want uh, they want the plant to focus on root growth as opposed to foliage growth. Um, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, so this is my red bud garden bed and I think it's looking beautiful. Over here is my no-name garden bed. I think that's what we decided to call it because I could not think of a good name for it. First of all, back here, this is my Clematis armandii snowdrift. It is not in bloom right now, but look at the foliage on this plant. So I had a... Um, flowering maple growing up right here and it just I don't know it just wasn't doing very well so I took that out and I repl and I didn't replace it I just let the clematis kind of grow up over there and just look at this plant it's I mean it just looks so pretty it just looks so beautiful and it's kind of just going everywhere and I think I'm gonna have to get in there and kind of train it a little bit and make sure it doesn't like get into the gutters you know and all that kind of stuff but holy moly I love the leaves on this plant. I love it. It is so interesting and it looks so different than most foliage that I have in my garden at least. And I just think it's so pretty and such a fantastic backdrop for right here. So I got this one as a cutting from my neighbor who lives down the street that way. And he has his on an east facing wall and it looks beautiful. And then another neighbor that way, he has his on a fence literally the same facing the same way so i'm telling you this of um to kind of think about that when you're thinking about what plants can go in your garden if you live in a neighborhood like i do drive around your neighborhood and see what people are growing and you can kind of see oh that plant does really well and that's north facing or that's east facing or he has it here or she has it there it's kind of a really good way kind of like a cheat um <laughs> to see what plant is going to do really well in a certain area and so that is why I put this clematis cutting right here because there was two neighbors that I had that had the same plant growing kind of in the same area in their garden and thriving and so that's how I knew that this plant was going to thrive in this spot and it is just so happy. So underneath that, I have my Miscanthus Cabaret. I I was inspired by Laura from Garden Answer. If you, you know, I'm sure you all watch her, but she talked about this plant, how much she loved it so much, and it was so pretty. Mine is just a baby. I got just little um I don't want to, it's not cutting, like clumps, I would say, actually from eBay because I could not find it anywhere. I couldn't find it anywhere. So these were just little clumps. This is the second year growing. It's looking really, really good. I'm happy with it. And she's right. It is a beautiful grass. I cut this one back down to the ground every fall, just like you would do with any normal grass. But I just think it's really pretty and it's nice and bright. And so it's kind of a dark corner back there, but it's nice and bright and it kind of, it just kind of pops. In front of there, I have some proven winners plants. Um, I have this double up pink begonia. Now I don't know what's going on here. I have to check the irrigation, but if you look at that one, that one, and that one, they're kind of small and kind of not blooming that well, but this one, this one, and this one are crazy. I mean, crazy blooming. They're so pretty. You can see it from the street and they just look like these big bouquets of, of begonias. It's so pretty. So I have to see kind of what's going on, what I did differently between those three and that th these three. I'm not totally, maybe, maybe it's a sun thing. I'm not totally sure yet. I'll have to kind of figure it out. Then right here, this is um, the Coleus or Plectranthus mini me watermelon. This is a new one for 2023. So you can kind of see, this is what the older foliage looks like, but with more sun, it's just so interesting. It's such an interesting one. I do have a couple blooms that I have to come in here and just kind of pinch off, which you can do with coleus. Um, but it's just, it's such an interesting plant. I have not... I have not seen a plant like this. It's super interesting. And then I have it also in my uh, window box over there in the shade. So I'll show you what it looks like over there. This is torch, color blaze torch like coleus. So pretty. I love this plant. And this one is supposed to get about three feet tall. So you can see in June, it's maybe only a foot tall right now and it'll keep growing and keep 
keep getting bigger and bigger, which I'm excited to see how it does. Okay, before I go in my gated garden bed, I'm gonna take a little detour to my favorite part of the garden these days, and that is my cottage garden. You guys, I just love it so much. It looks so good. I find myself coming out here and just taking a peek at this cottage garden just to see how it's doing, to see what else is just shining these days. Look at my false stem spirea. Holy moly, that's beautiful. Here's another one coming. Oh, here's my cashmere mist Mexican hydrangea. That's about to start blooming. Oh, and look, I have a clematis. I don't even know the name of this clematis. I planted it from like, what do you call it? Tomatis, clematis tubers? I'm not even sure what you call it. Um, but I planted it I think in 2020, I wanna say, long time ago. Um, and it's taken a while to start flowering. And of course there's only one, one bloom on it right now, uh, but I don't care. I just, I'm so happy to see it. Okay, so let me start from the beginning. So right here, this is Super Venus Stormburst. Beautiful lavender color, beautiful lavender color. I know we all love Super Bina Sparkling Amethyst. Beautiful Super Bina. Like, you can't beat it. This is a close second if you, you all are looking for a lavender color. It's just, it's the prettiest, softest lavender color. Oh, I can't even explain it. It's so pretty. And then right next to this star right here, this is the Pure White Butterfly Marguerite Daisy. This is three plants right here. And you can see it's just this perfect little ball of those perfect like stereotypical happy plants. It, I just love it, it's so pretty. And then behind that, I have the Orange Appeal Thunbergia or Black Eyed Susan. It's growing up this obelisk. I had some trouble deciding what I wanted to grow up this obelisk. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just put an annual there. So I had one of these Thunbergias, just one. It's going crazy, you guys. <laughs> It's going crazy. And this is another plant that I need to get in there and I need to make sure it doesn't absolutely take over. Um, Chase and I were laughing because we were over here and we could start seeing it. You can start seeing little orange blooms underneath the marguerite daisies. And you can see this is, this is a trailing stem kind of coming through. So this is one that I am going to have to watch, but I'm so happy about it. It's such a, in such a good way. So I always say for my cottage garden, one of the things that I definitely wanted was some vertical interest and that's what this obelisk did and then a, a happy accident <laughs> uh, was these alliums right here this came in like a pack a mix of alliums i'm pretty sure i got it from costco i had some other ones that bloomed really pretty and then i let them kind of fade and then i you know i pulled them and i'm going to dry them probably spray paint them but these guys came up they are let's see they're about six feet tall i would say they came up, they took longer to bloom, longer to bloom than all the other ones. I feel like they're just, you can kind of see, they're just starting to open their blooms right now. Um, I'm pretty sure a couple of you told me that they're called summer drummer alliums. And I'm pretty sure that's right because I was looking online to see if I could buy more of these and they looked exactly like summer drummer alliums, except for one of the places said, they were eight inch <laughs> balls. And these are obviously not eight inch balls. They are, I don't know, three inches, maybe four inches, something like that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I ended up purchasing them. I think I got 25 of them just to make sure that I got them before they're sold out. That is something I want to tell you all. Start thinking about bulbs because they're going to start they're going to start selling out. I know that that's horrible to say in June. Every time in June, I think about that and I think, I don't want to think about my, my fall planted bulbs right now. Why do I want to think about that? But the good ones are actually going to sell out. So I ended up buying these. Where did I get them from? K Borgensen. I, I can't even say that. I'll put the name on the screen right now. Um, that it's just, just any place. I just kind of grabbed them that had them because I love the height of these. I mean, look at that. Look at that. It's just, it's just so pretty. It is such a standout plant in this garden. I love it so much. And can you imagine, like, I haven't decided if I just want to leave it there or if I want to put it in different places in the garden. I, I just don't think I can live without these summer drummer alliums. I, I, they're just stunning. They're just stunning. I just can't say it enough. They're 
they're beautiful. So, okay, I'll stop talking about these, but I just think that they are so pretty and they are so worth it. And I am going to plant them every single year from now on. Okay, behind them, I have a couple liatris. These, these guys are actually left over from a couple years ago. I'm actually surprised that they came up, but they came up, so that's great. I'm gonna let them bloom. This is a uh, artist pearl ageratum floss flower. I was a little worried about this one at first because it wasn't looking too good earlier on in the season. It's looking so much better now. It's looking so pretty. They look like little cotton balls and there's a whole bunch of blooms coming out. So it's, oh, it's just going to look so pretty. You all can kind of see the area that I, I need to clean up. I've been leaving this here because I really want these alliums to come back next year. So I'm letting them soak up all the sun and I'm going to let these summer drummers stay as long as they want to because I want them to rebloom next year. Over here, I have Snow Princess Lobularia. Bees all over it, so happy. This is Lime Green Nicotiana. I actually got this plant from Annie's Annuals two years ago. The first year, I think I got like three blooms on it. And this year, it's looking beautiful. So I think it's about done. I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to cut it back this week um, because I think it still looks pretty. But it's, it's, starting, it's starting to kind of fade a little bit. More of the Superbina Stormburst right here. This is Lady, Lady Godiva Calendula. I don't know why I can't say that, but I can't say it. Back here, I have more of the Orange Appeal Thunbergia. Not doing as well as that one, and I'm not totally sure why, um, but that one hopefully will start growing up the fence right here. Jason put this twine up on the fence here for me before our... Uh, garden tour in early May and we just used twine because we weren't sure if we were going to leave it there but I have to say I love it. I love it so much so I think I'm going to after everything's done here for the season I think I'm going to replace the twine with wire so it stays a little bit longer because I just I just love the shape of what he did. He did this all himself. I didn't even give him instruction on this which those of you that have husbands, that's a big deal, right? So he did a really good job. I'm so happy with it. And I want it to be a little bit more permanent. All right, right here we have Whirlwind Blue Scavola. This plant is supposed to be an absolute heat lover. The hotter it is, the happier it is. And I think that that is definitely true because as the temperature has gone up here in Northern California, this plant has gotten kind of like a brighter blue and I can see it starting to spread and it's just loving its life right here. More of the pure white butterfly marguerite daisy that's also loving its life. And then right here, kind of hiding in, I only had one of these, but it's super happy as well. This is a Selenia yellow begonia, and this one is new for 2024. I love this yellow color. This yellow color with the whirlwind blue, I think is so pretty. So I, I have to say, I love this little area right here. I think it's perfect for pictures because I just love this kind of mix of color right there. Right here I have um, a Veronica. This is a um, pink damask. Yeah, that's right. I was going to say damask pink, but no, it's a pink damask. There's bees over all over it. It's so happy. Same thing with this um, Junior Walker Catmint right here. This Junior Walker Catmint, it's it's almost ready for me to cut back. It's one of those that's almost ready. Um, but I was informed by a lot of you. I So I bought this plant, Junior Walker. It's a um, like a takeoff from Walker's Low Catmint, which is the, the very common type of catmint. And I, I thought, okay, Junior Walker, that means it's going to be small. That means it's not going to be very big and it'll be able to fit. And when I plant nine or 12 or whatever I did here, it will totally, it will totally work. Well, no, you all informed me that Junior Walker is just like the son of Walker's Low and it still is supposed to get tall and Walker's Low isn't even meant to be low. Walker's Low is named after a place in England. So that was very interesting news to me. I had no idea. So if it looks like I overplanted my catmint, yes, I absolutely did. Right behind the catmint, I have a limelight hydrangea that is starting to bud up. I cannot wait. It's going to be so pretty. I think I need to put a little bit of iron on that because when I'm looking at it now, it looks it's looking a little yellow to me. 
And then coming over here, you can see lots and lots of sweet peas looking so pretty, about ready to be cut back. I can see a lot of snow pea pods. I just have so many sweet peas in my garden right now. I just couldn't keep up with, with keeping the um, pea pods trimmed off. Uh, and that's okay. That is okay. The sweet peas are not going to last for me with the heat anyway. Um, and they were, they were meant to be an early, you know, early season annual. So I'm not upset about losing them. Um, but they are looking just so pretty and so much vertical interest. I, I love it. Coming over here, more sweet peas on this sign here for the fairy garden. The fairy garden is absolutely getting used. I always come over here and see what else is new. It looks like someone was making some, I don't know what, but I just love it. <laughs> it's just really, really sweet. So I'll have to cut back this area to give them a little bit more room to play. By them, I mean my girls and then also the kids in the neighborhood. I can hear them playing. We'll be in our backyard, I don't know, in the pool or something like that. And I can hear kids playing out here and it just makes my heart so happy. Look at this sweet pea. Isn't that pretty? Anyway, so coming over here, this garden bed is my oak tree garden bed. It's looking natural and beautiful and a little bit overgrown, <laughs> but that's okay. I do need to come back here. I have my, um, what am I trying to say? Naked Lady Amaryllis right here. I let the foliage die back. I'm going to go clean it up and then they're going to shoot their bloom stalks out hopefully pretty soon. That will be beautiful. Um, my Budlia, my Pugster Blue Budlia is about to start coming, which is really exciting. My uh, Hookera is blooming, which is really pretty. This hookera, I don't know. I'm gonna leave it here. I'm not gonna change it, but you can see some of the leaves kind of get scorched a little bit, you know, and I'll come out here and I'll take off the scorched leaves and it's fine. Um, but I just kind of like that bright pop of chartreuse right here. Um, I just think it's really, really pretty. And then you can see my sea lavender or status. Look at how good that is looking. Very exciting. Just looks really pretty. And then I'm gonna have to come out here. It looks like my plumbago is about to start blooming. Um, I do have wire. You can barely see it, but I do have wire here. And the, it wasn't so much to have this plumbago be like diamonds on this wire. It was more just to keep it up against the fence. So I'll come out here and I'll just start training it up against the fence kind of like that to keep it a little bit more controlled. Uh, those of you who know Cape, Blum Cape Plumbago, it's kind of a wild shrub. I love it because it's so pretty. The blooms are beautiful, but it does get a little bit wild. Um, so I'm just trying to keep it a little controlled. My neighbor was kind of making fun of me saying, like, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> Cause he didn't think that I could keep it controlled. So, We'll see how it, we'll see how it goes. I will keep working on it and I will keep trying to control it. Then the other thing is I have these Southern sword ferns right here. They're doing beautifully. They've tripled in size. They're super happy. These are like the easiest plants and they have that ferny look, um, that I want. And when you live in a really hot area, sometimes it's really hard to get this ferny look. So this is a really good option if you guys uh, live in a hot area like I do. Okay, let's make our way back to the gated garden bed. Holy moly. <laughs> I might have overdid it a little bit in this garden bed. <laughs> That's okay. I love it. Okay, so the purple is Supertunia Mini Vista Ultramarine. It is a new one for 2024. It's beautiful. It is so pretty. It is so pretty. I love Supertunia Mini Vistas. I think they are such a fantastic plant. They are vigorous. They are just bloom heavy, but they're not super crazy, right? Like, can you see the kind of circle right here? They kind of stay in a little circle like that, which I think is so much fun. So Supertunia Mini Vista Ultramarine mixed with Supertunia Mini Vista Scarlet. Scarlet is new for this year. You That is available to you all. The Ultramarine is for 2024, so you can't get that in garden centers until next year. So, you know, be on the lookout for this next year, but this one is available. Scarlet is 
beautiful. It is a beautiful red. I always, well, I was telling you all this, it's hard to describe this red, but the best way that I can describe it is the best red nail polish color. You know how we're, we always look for that perfect red nail polish color for summer and it's hard to find that perfect red color. This is the red color that I'm always looking for. And I have like five different red nail, polish, nail polishes and I'm always trying to look for this color. It is such the perfect red summer color. And you know, I don't have a lot of red in my garden. There's not a lot of red in my garden, but because of this scarlet color, I feel like it's kind of like a pinky red. So it kind of mixes really really well with the other pinks that I have in my garden. For instance, the Surefire Rose Begonia. Look at this plant, you guys. Look at this plant. It's just, it's fantastic. This is a fantastic plant. I have not tried the Surefire White or the Surefire Red. This is Surefire Rose. I cannot say enough good things about this plant. One of the reasons why I love this plant so much is because it tolerates sun and shade. So I have a line you all can see. I have a line right here. You see that? It kind of splits my Wichita blue juniper in half. And as the season changes and the sun gets higher over this north facing side of my house, this line, the shadow line kind of changes as well. So this is kind of a tough garden bed for me because it changed the, su the sun versus shade changes so often. So having the surefire rose begonia that can take both is an absolute lifesaver for me. And it's so pretty. You can see it's happy as a clam right here. And I just think that that this plant, it almost has like red and pink in with it. So y you can put it next to red or you can put it next to pink and it will look good and it will look happy and it will kind of tie everything together and it's just the most beautiful thing. Okay, I'll stop talking about it, but I really, really love it. <laughs> I think it is so pretty. All right, then over here I have a couple peonies right here. These are Sarah Bernhardt peonies. They did not bloom this year. I did not expect them to because I think I planted them two falls ago and I think it you know it takes I planted them from the tubers so you know starting from fresh this year here I have my limelight prime hydrangeas holy moly they are looking so good this year I cannot wait till they start to bloom so it does get really hot here in northern California and a lot of uh panicle hydrangeas that normally turn to that pink color um you know, at the end of the season, kind of, a lot of them won't turn that for us here. Like my limelight, my regular limelight hydrangea right there, that this one usually doesn't turn to that pink color, but the limelight prime did like bright pink. So I'll see how it does this year, especially with it looking so good. But if you all, again, if you all live in a hot environment, you might want to think about limelight prime because it will give you a better chance at getting that late summer, early fall um, flush of pink. Let me show you the Jack Frost Brunnera looking so good. I just planted this. It's so happy right here. And then right here is my tiny tough stuff mountain hydrangea. Oh, it's just so pretty. And I have not acidified this plant one time and I'm still getting blue blooms, which is really exciting. So this is a kind of um, behind the wall of sweet peas right here. And you all can see, um, you know, they're starting to get kind of yellow. They're starting to kind of lean over. I'm kind of looking at this and going like, oh yeah, I just, I have not, not much time left for these sweet peas. And that is okay. I'm totally fine with it. I have my Mystic Spires Blue Salvia right here. These are again, a staple in my garden and I love them so much. Okay, coming over here, my star jasmine bloomed beautifully this past month. So pretty, but you can see it's about done blooming. And now I'm going to get, this is the bad thing about star jasmine. Now I'm going to get these little brown wilted flowers all over my, my fresh clean mulch, which is fine. I'm okay with that. Um, you know, it's just part of it. You can't keep everything perfectly pristine all the time. I also did this this past month. Um, this is my dwarf princess, dwarf princess Peruvian lily or, um, 
man, why do I never remember the A name for it? I'm going to put it down below. I always call it a Peruvian lily. So that is one that I got at Van Winden's in Napa when I went to go see Julio, my friend Julio, and did a garden tour of his garden that was beautiful. This is my new Pufferfish Hydrangea. Pufferfish Hydrangea is new for proven winners. I think it's new this year. It is the most beautiful hydrangea and I was so excited to find it. I find it at, found it at Wintour Gardens in Reading. I cannot wait for it to bloom. I hope it blooms this year, but I was so excited to find that plant and that is that is a plant that I'm super excited about because I think it is the most interesting hydrangea. Super interesting. Okay, so this is my shade area right here. I have to show you. Look, look at my window box. Look at how good it looks. Oh, so this is that Color Blaze Mini Me Watermelon Coleus. You can see it with more shade. So the Color Blaze Coleus can take sun or it can take shade. It can take both of it. And you can see in the shade, the colors are a little bit brighter, less... Um, I don't want to say washed out, but like, so this area gets a little bit more sun than over there. So you can kind of see what happens with a little bit more sun. Um, it's just looking so pretty. I just think it's so pretty. Um, and then behind here, we have hippo rose polka dot plant, which I've always thought of polka dot plant as a house plant. And it was news to me that you could plant it outside in the shade Look at how pretty it looks. It just, it like brings that pinky color, but in foliage, which is fantastic. So it's a fantastic option for planting in shade. I mean, could you imagine this with like a pink begonia? Wouldn't that be pretty? I want to do that next year, I think. Um, but I, oh, I just think it's so pretty. And then I have my ostrich fern under here. I have a bunch of hostas that are growing and looking really pretty right now. Um, and then this is another one of those southern, southern sword ferns. Happy as a clam right here, and it's almost too much. Let me show you. As we come in the gate, so here's my gate right here. You know, and of course this is a, what do you call it? Like a right swing gate or left swing gate. You come in here and then it kind of bumps and you're, it's kind of in your way. So I was talking about this kind of being in the way and people were saying, well, this is going over the walkway just as much, but we don't use this walkway as much. We use this walkway five or 10 times a day. So I think the Southern Sword Fern, unfortunately, has to come out. I'll probably transplant it just over to my oak tree garden bed, but it's just gotten a little too happy right here. <laughs> so I just, I just think it does need to come out, unfortunately. Okay, then coming over here, I've got a gold dust plant right here. This plant started off so tiny and it is just loving its life. It's more of a shade plant so it's another really good shade option I just want to point out all my shade options for you all um, because I just think that that's a really good one right here is a rock and fuchsia salvia this is my one of my oldest plants that I have in my garden it keeps coming back better and better this is a fantastic plant and the bees love it really love it down here this is a hoopla vivid orchid Super Tunia. This is a new for 2024 variety. Trying this out. It is the most interesting plant or the most interesting Super Tunia. Look at it with the white um, edging. What do they call that? Like a white picketty, I think is what they call it. Oh, it's just so pretty. So you can see these are kind of facing this way for the afternoon sun. And then these have kind of faced this way for the morning, the early morning sun, which I think is so interesting. Okay, so coming up here, I can't even really walk here. <laughs> it's, it's a bit much, I would say. So this is really where I need to clean up this upcoming week or two. Um, I need to cut back my Salvia Nemorosa right there. I need to cut back all of the sweet peas. You can see my Vermillionaire Kufia is happy as can be right there. I have another one up here. It's not as happy, look, yeah that one didn't do very well. That's okay. Um, and then this right here is my Super Bean Whiteout. You all know I always talk about how great this plant is. This is a fabulous plant. Um, this one, and then uh, take a look at my uh, June Bat Garden Tour because I'll show you all my Super Super Bina Pink Cashmere. It's the newest Super Bina. It's supposed to come out in 2024 for Proven Winners. 
it's better than this one. Like I hate, to, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to tell the white out that, but pink cashmere is actually better than this one. And I'm, I cannot wait. I'm going to put it all over my garden because super beanas are actually perennials. They act like perennials in my zone 9B and the pink cashmere is just so pretty. Here's another Vermillionaire Kufia right here, loving its life. And then coming over here, this is my crepe myrtle garden bed, looking really, really good. I have some um, white wand, am I saying that right? White wands Veronica right there. And then this one is a proven winner's one. Look at that pretty purple color. I'll put the name on the screen right now because I cannot remember the name for the life of me. After I talk so much about flowers, it it gets to the point that my brain just goes to mush because I've, you know, I've thought about so many flower names, which I love. It's one of my favorite things to do. But if I ever say the wrong name of any of these flowers, I apologize. I just, my brain just starts to go to mush the longer I talk. <laughs> so anyway, this area is a success. This is such a success and I am expanding this next year. So this is Super Tunia Blue Skies planted over a bed of Creeping Jenny. And you can see it's shaded for almost the whole day because of the crepe myrtle tree until the hot afternoon sun, until the sun gets low enough and you have that hot, hot, hot afternoon sun. And the Super Tunia can handle it and the Creeping Jenny can handle it, but it can also handle the shade. And I've talked about Super Tunia Blue Skies before. I think this plant does a little bit better in more shade. I just do. I've grown it in full sun before and it's fine. Like it looks pretty, but it, I don't think it's anything special. I think it is a special shade plant. I don't know why this whole video is turning into a shade video, but I just kind of want to point this out because I, you know, I thought about this area and I wanted it to be low enough so that I could still see my landscape rock right there. Um, but this is just such a success. I'm so happy with it and I want to expand it up and over the landscape rock next season, have more of this Creeping Jenny and more of these Super Tunia Blue Skies. And I, I just think it's gonna love it. Then I have more of my Mystic Spires Blue right here. And again, shade for most of the day until the hot afternoon sun and it can still handle itself. It's still happy. And that is, to me, I think of that as the hardest garden bed to plant for when it's mostly shade to the point where the plants would be considered shade plants, like part shade to full shade plants because of the amount of sun that it gets. But then because it gets the hot afternoon sun, most shade plants will just scorch in that area. So it's always nice. I feel like it's always nice to have options that you can plant in those really tough garden beds like I have here. And these two, I think they work really well together. I'm going to, I'm going to expand it because I think it's perfect. Um, I, yeah, I just love it. I just think it's a really good option for this type of garden bed. Then finally, my cut flower garden that's looking beautiful. This month I came through and I cut a whole bunch of stuff back. I cut my Cosmos way back. I cut the white dill on me way back. It, it just, it, it's growing back and it's growing back beautifully. So let me start here. This is the Gomfrina. This is supposed to be QIS pink gomprina, I think is what I had planned to plant here. This is not QIS pink. <laughs> this is QIS purple. So I don't know if it was my fault or if it was the seed supplier's fault, um, but this is definitely not QIS pink. Um, and uh, I, I don't care because I love QIS purple. I think it is such a pretty, pretty plant. If you all haven't planted Gomfrina before, plant Gomfrina. It loves the heat. It is slow to start. So just be prepared to be very, very patient with this. This is one of those plants that I don't think does very well for the cool flower method because it just really likes the heat. It's almost like the roots need the soil temperature to be warm enough to even function to even get nutrients. Um, so you just have to be super patient with it and just wait for it to get hot. But as soon as it gets hot, it's, it's gonna take off and it's going to be happier than ever. Okay. Here are my straw flower. This is the Sultane mixed straw flower. I have one bud right there, which I'm very excited about. Oh, I think I have another one right there. So I'll be interested to see how those do. I do have some 
crazy ones, some, some plants that reseeded itself. And I don't know why, but I cannot bring myself to pull them out. Okay. So here's this one, amaranth or celosia. Not totally sure. If you guys want to weigh in, I would appreciate it. I did plant celosia kind of in this area last year, but you know how much amaranth reseeds itself. Same thing, amaranth or celosia. Not totally sure. <laughs> and then over here, my zinnias are starting to come up. I have benary wine right here. This is supposed to be benary coral, I think. And then this one is supposed to be benary uh, bright pink, which I can see one kind of over there. So I'm really excited for these guys to start popping up. This white dill on me is looking so pretty. I just, it just reminds me of a wedding bouquet. I love it. And then this sunflower, I don't know. I would think it's going to start to bloom soon, but I see no signs of it. <laughs> so I'll be really interested to see how it does. My sweet peas are done. I was waiting for this video to show you all. They're done. They're done. I'm ready to pull them out. It's just too hot for them. They're surrounded by concrete. It's just, it's just too hot. So that's okay. They lasted till June. I'm going to take them out. I have all of these uh, sunflowers. Look at how good they did. So I've got these, these, these. I have a whole bunch of them and I, a bunch of them came up. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide them and be really careful because sunflowers don't like being messed with. Um, but I think that I'm going to pull out some of these and put them over here so that I'll have even more of the sunflowers. Um, so I'll be excited to see how those do. And then here's my forever happy status. I need to get out here. I've been cutting these and drying these. They're going directly into drying. Well, first I condition them, put them in water overnight, and then I start drying them. And I've been waiting. So the purple, the lavender are the bracts, and then the yellow are actually the flowers. And so you, when you want to harvest status for drying, you want to make sure that you can see the flowers or else it might wilt. This is just for drying. This is not for uh, anything else. Else. but you can see a lot of these I need to harvest so that's what I'm gonna be doing probably tomorrow morning is coming out here and harvesting most of these and then finally I have my afternoon white cosmos looking so good this is the second flush of the season these are just my favorite cosmos I love them oh and then I have pincushion flower in here they're starting to come look you can see that one's starting to come that one's beautiful and this is the pink cushion flower formula mix so it's going to be a whole bunch of different colors all right everyone so that is going to be it for my june front garden tour like i said everything's looking a bit wild a bit crazy it does need i need to spend some time out here with my pruners but i just love it when it looks like this i wish my garden could look like this all season long like just to the point of being overgrown, but not quite being overgrown. And I know, I know it can't stay like this, but that's one of the reasons why I love filming these garden tours because on this video, it can stay like this forevermore. <laughs> so I love it. I encourage you all to get your phones out and film just little clips of your garden just so that you can look back in November or December when nothing's really blooming and you can look at how beautiful your garden looked in mid-June. So again, I hope all you fathers out there have a happy Father's Day. I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.